Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today we'll be updating our inventory system from the previous video that looks like this to an inventory system that looks more like this one that has a third person character controller and items that are actually distinguishable on the ground and are not just squares. Not just squares. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also be adding in a camera using Cinemachine and a virtual camera to follow the player around. So this should be a pretty simple video, especially since we're using Unity's standard assets for the character controller, because this series isn't about making a character controller, but maybe later down the line we can consider that. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go back into our project. We're going to open up the asset store, then we can search for the standard asset pack. Once you're selected on it, we can just go ahead and import it into our project after you download it. Now this has a lot of objects in it and we don't need everything, so let's deselect everything inside of here. And we're just going to select the third person character controller. So when you find the characters folder, you'll see a first person character, a rollerball, and a third person character. Just select the third person character, it'll bring in the prefab, its materials, an animator, everything that you need, including the scripts. So let's import this. Then you'll see we have an error. It says the type or namespace name cross-platform input does not exist. So let's double click on this and see why we're getting this error. And the reason is, is because the standard assets actually comes with a cross-platform input controller. But we're just going to get rid of that. And then instead of having the cross-platform input, let's just use input. Then we can save that off and go back into our project. And after it compiles, the error should go away. Now let's go to our scene. We need a ground for our player to stand on, so let's create a plane. We'll make it 100 by 100. Zero it out. Now let's move it down 0.5. And then let's go into the third person character controller's prefab folder and just drag in the third person controller. And if you look at our current player, the only thing that really makes it a player is this player script. So let's just go to here and add the player script. Then we can delete the player that we had before. Now let's click play and see if this character is able to move around. Oop, we have a moving character, but when we walk into items, we do not pick up an item. And that's because it says our inventory is not set. And if you look at your third person character controller to the player script, we don't have an inventory set. So let's set our inventory and click play again and see if we can pick up items. And we can. Cool. So now we just need to add the camera in. So let's go to Windows, Package Manager, Show All Packages. Then let's search for Cinemachine, install it. What Cinemachine is, if you don't already know, is it's a really advanced camera system that you can easily add to your game for free for easy to add advanced camera movement. So once we have Cinemachine added in, we can go to Cinemachine, Create Virtual Camera. Then on here, let's set the Follow and the Look At to our third person character controller. Let's make the Binding Mode World Space. Give it a Y of 10 and a Z of negative 15. You can make these values whatever you want, but this is just how I'm going to set it up for my preference. Let's change the dampening on all three axes to zero. Let's turn the Look Ahead smoothness all the way down. Then the horizontal and vertical dampening, turn that to zero. Now let's click play and see if our camera follows our player. Excellent, it does. Now let's make the spheres on the ground actually display the item that they're representing. And the way we're going to do that is by, first let's delete all of these items except for one. Now on this one sphere that we have left, Let's delete the sphere that's below it, and instead of having a sphere, let's display a sprite. So we'll do a 2D object and a sprite. And now going into the ground item class, we're going to make it to where every time you set the item object, it's going to automatically grab the UI display of that item object and set it to the sprite child that we just created for that object. So it'll grab the item object sprite and set it to this sprite variable slot on the child object of our ground item. So to do that, let's go back into the script. First thing we're going to do is after mono behavior, let's add the iSerialization callback receiver. And we've used this in previous videos, but I'll just go over it quickly again. What this is, is every time you chain, make an editor change, which anything that's displayed in the editor can be serialized. So anything that's changed in the editor is a serialization change. 
which is going to fire the on after and on before serialization. Which, as you can assume, this fires before it serializes, and this fires after it serializes. And what we want to do is before it serializes the object, we're going to set the sprite render of the child component to the UI display. So we're simply going to say get component in children sprite renderer dot sprite is equal to item dot UI display. And then we're just going to say editor utility. And if you get an error after typing it, it's because you need to be using the Unity editor. So we'll say editor utility dot set dirty. And what we're setting dirty is the sprite renderer. This lets Unity know that something changed on that object, so you're able to save it. So let's go back into Unity, and you can see as soon as it finished compiling, it automatically set the sprite onto the object. So if we were to change this, it'll automatically change it to whatever sprite's being displayed. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sprite on the ground always face towards your camera. Because right now you can see it's not facing the camera, not in, in this scene, but in the game scene. But we want it to always look like it's facing the camera like this, no matter the angle of our camera. So to do that, let's go to our sprite, and we're going to create a new script for it. We're going to call it billboard, because that's usually what it's referred to when you're making a sprite face your camera is a billboarding effect. So we'll make a new script called billboard. Then we can open the billboarding script up. And this is going to be a really simple script. All we need is a late update. And the reason we're doing late update is because we want this to happen after everything else happens so we don't get weird glitches in the rendering of our graphics. And we'll simply say transform.forward is equal to camera.main.transform.forward. And just to point out, camera.main is actually doing an object lookup to your scene, which isn't exactly recommended. It would probably be better to make a public we'll just go ahead and do it because it is the correct way to do it we'll make a public camera camera and then we'll link to this instead of a camera dot main because camera dot main we're going to be doing an object dot fine every update and you really don't want to do that so we'll use the camera dot transform dot forward uh, let's just put an underline on this to fix that recommendation so make sure you add the underline to this one also then we can let it update click play and this should face towards your camera excellent no matter where you go it'll look like it's facing directly at the camera so let's make a few more items and now let's change these items up we'll make these first ones all monkfish we'll make these next ones bones then we can do a sword two swords sword one let's make another sword one and a sword two, make another sword two. Then let's make one of these bones a shield. Then let's duplicate the shield. Cool, we have a bunch of items. Let's see if we can pick them all up. Excellent, we can. So I think that'll be everything for this video. Like I said, it was pretty simple. We were just updating the graphics for our inventory system. So in the next video, we'll add in item swapping. So after we add items to our inventory, you can easily just relocate them to whatever part of your inventory that you want. So you can easily organize items. Makes for a much better game experience and a much cleaner looking inventory system. It also still works with saving and loading. So we can move items wherever we want, save it out, exit out of the game and open up. And when we reload it, it should have everything in the exact same slots. Another cool thing we can do is if we have multiple inventories let's see if this one has an inventory saved on it it does okay so we can go to our inventory screen to our display inventory script and we can just switch between which inventory we, which inventory we want to display and it'll automatically update to that new inventory even though your character will still have a link to whatever inventory it's currently using so if your character has a different inventory than what's being displayed it'll still actually add the objects to your previous inventory. So if you have code to like show different inventories when you switch back to this one, it'll still be updated with the items that got added while you were displaying the other inventory. <laughs> that was a lot of rambling. All right, cool. So yeah, that's what we'll do in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, stay coding.